everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be preparing a compound called cesium tetrachloroiodate. This compound is pretty interesting because it contains the tetrachloroiodate ion with the formula ICl4-. This can combine with an ion such as potassium, sodium, rubidium, or cesium to create a salt. First, I'm going to make potassium tetrachloroiodate, formula KiCl4, by the reaction of potassium iodate with hydrochloric acid. This will generate chlorine gas in a large quantity, so this must be done outside in good ventilation or in a fume hood. I will then take the potassium tetrachloroiodate that's produced and react it in a double displacement reaction with cesium chloride. This will produce potassium chloride and cesium tetrachloroiodate, which is considerably more stable than potassium tetrachloroiodate, the latter releasing iodine trichloride as it decomposes at room temperature. Cesium tetrachloroiodate is stable in storage and does not evolve iodine trichloride and can be kept for a very long time without significant decomposition. The quantities I'm using only really matter for the first part, which is making the potassium tetrachloroiodate. The quantities of the reagents that we will need are 6 grams of potassium iodate and 40 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. We will use as much cesium chloride as we need to convert all the potassium tetrachloroiodate to the cesium salt. Here's what the cesium salt looks like. It's a nice bright yellow powder with a nice little crystalline sort of structure to it. This is formed when cesium chloride is added to the tetrachloroidate solution. The cesium salt is pretty insoluble and immediately precipitates out as this yellow powder. This can then be filtered and dried to obtain the powder like you see in the speaker right here. So, with that being said, I'm going to go outside where ventilation is much better and get on with the reaction. So now that I'm outside, I can continue with the reaction. So I've got a 250 milliliter beaker here, to which I'm going to add the 40 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Perfect. Now I'm going to turn on stirring and slowly add the potassium iodate. This will generate chlorine, which you obviously do not want to inhale or be around, so I'm going to be upwind for this. I'm going to add it slowly with a small spatula. We should see a color shift from the clear of the hydrochloric acid to the vibrant orange color of the potassium tetrachloroiodate. Okay, so that's all the iodate that's added. Now I'm just going to let this stir for a few minutes to make sure that all the chlorine has been driven off, for the most part. A little bit will be evolved over the next few hours or so. And I'm just going to let it stir and add any extra hydrochloric acid if I need to. You may be able to see there are some crystals that have precipitated out of the solution, and that is potassium tetrachloride, which is a very nice color. However, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take a portion of this mixture once it is done stirring, which should be about 5 or 10 minutes from now. And I'm going to add some extra hydrochloric acid to it to dissolve the potassium tetrachloroiodate. And then I can do the double displacement reaction. So, I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. So, here in the beaker I have 2 grams of cesium chloride dissolved in a minimal amount of water, which is about 4 milliliters or so. It's actually really soluble, come to find out. So what I'm going to do from here is add the solution of potassium tetrachloroiodate and hydrochloric acid to the cesium chloride solution, which will precipitate cesium tetrachloroiodate as a yellow solid and will leave potassium chloride in solution, hopefully. So here we go. I'm going to turn on stirring here really quick. So you'll see that the mixture is getting extremely thick with precipitate. 
that is what we want to see. I'm actually going to switch out the stir bar for a uh, bigger one. Okay, so now that it's finished stirring, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum filter this. So here's the solid cesium tetrachloride after drying. A nice golden yellow solid with a crystalline texture to it that is free-flowing and does not absorb moisture from the atmosphere. It is stable in storage and does not release any iodine trichloride. I really hope you enjoyed. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Without all of you, videos like this would not be possible. Thank you.